Before I wanted to actually film my book video, can I just show you the snow? Salutations! Welcome to Love in the Language of Literacy. My name is Sophia Lee, and today I'm doing my November wrap-up. In case you didn't notice by that awesome intro, I am not in SoCal anymore. There is snow outside my window, which means I moved to upstate New York. And I have a whole post about this, I'll link it in the doobly-doo or up here somewhere, but it explains the whole shebang. For right now, I just wanted to film my November wrap-up. This will not be my permanent filming location. I'm not even sure if I'm in frame, but I was like, I want to be comfortable, so I'm just going to sit in this awesome bean bag with my tea and my Hunger Games cup and have an awesome time. November was not a normal month. I won NaNoWriMo, I moved across the country. A whole lot of things happened to me. And when things happen, as you well know, you don't get to read as much. Thankfully, I'm not behind my Goodreads goal, and I will still most definitely read 150 books in 2014, which I am so psyched about. Because I also moved across the country, I don't have any physical books to hold up for you for this wrap-up, which I apologize for. But let's just get into this. But this month was Afterworld, and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Afterworld is actually two novels in one, featuring a protagonist named Darcy, a woman named Liz, and Darcy writes the story and Liz lives it. So we've got two stories, temporary and a paranormal one, going on simultaneously. So you get to see all the different events in Darcy's life happening that affect Liz the character. My issue with this was I was not easily able to separate my feelings for the two different stories. I hated Hated, hated, hated Liz's story. It was paranormal romance, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of that. However, Darcy's story was amazing. Darcy's in New York City, she's a debut author, she's trying to find her place in the world. Does that sound like me or what? Except for the fact that I haven't actually had a book written. The second book I read this month was Induction Day by P.K. Hezro. Rezo. I have no clue. Please correct me, P.K., if you are actually watch this video. Anyway, I read this book for a blog tour, and it is the sequel to Butterman Time Travel Incorporated. I obviously can't synopsize the second book for you, but I will try my best to synopsize the first. It is a, is a new adult time travel romance book it's about a girl named Bianca Butterman, and her family is one of five commercial time travel agencies, and Tristan Helms, this druggy pop star, wants to go back in time to find something that he really, really needs. And she is the time travel pilot, so to speak, that is in charge of this. I thought the sequel was incredibly strong. I was hoping for a little more world building in terms of how time travel works because of how open-ended it can be. The third book I read this month was also known as by Robin Benway. This book is about Margaret Silver and she is in a family of spies and this is her first ever mission on her own to befriend this boy whose father supposedly has this information that will expose her family and everyone else in their spy agency. I rated only 3 out of 5 stars for the writing wasn't incredible. 2 cliche tropes. 3 it felt too much like Gallagher Girls. It just couldn't compare. The reason I read it and bought it in the first place was because I was going to the Sarah J Moss book signing back in September. And I saw that Robin Benway was also going to be there, and I was like, oh my gosh, I wanted to read that book, so why, why not just buy a paperback copy, get it signed by the author, the cover's really great. Which I could show you if I had the physical book with me. The next book I read this month was The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars to. The Kiss of Deception is about a girl named Leah, and she runs away on her wedding day. That does not sound at all like Girl of Fire and Thorns. With her maid to her maid's hometown where she grew up. The interesting part of the story is that there are two male protagonists. One is the assassin sent to kill her and one is the king she was supposed to marry. They were given two names, Caden and Rafe. There's the name, the name, the position, the position. We never know who is actually who, what name belongs to which person. Like, one chapter might be narrated by Rafe, one chapter might be narrated by the assassin, but we have no idea who's who. And Mary Pier e. Pearson kind of twists your mind and makes you think you're do that's the other person. I've never been able to read a big ebook very fast, and I managed to read it in two days. It'll be that information in my review. But it was good, solid, but I felt like there should have been more world building. 
And even though I was excited every moment, I felt like it was too big. Like, we did not need to spend 60% of the book in that little town that I can't pronounce. There was a lot of extra information that wasn't vital. The fifth book I read this month, and my favorite, was Amy and Rogers' Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. I know what you're going to say. Sophia, it's not summer anymore. Well, guess what? I was in SoCal at that time. It was summer. This book is about a girl and a boy named Amy and Roger, and Amy's dad has just passed away for reasons we don't know yet. And her mom moved across the country to Connecticut, and Amy has to follow her mom, but she doesn't want to drive. So Roger comes in, and she and Roger road trip across the country to Connecticut. The epic part is that the mom sets out the most boring route possible for the quickest time to get to Connecticut. But what happens is that they go completely off track, an epic detour, and it's amazing to see how much two characters who don't know each other at all can develop so much and I can love them so much by the end of a story. It was an extremely interesting book. It was so relevant to myself because it was a day or two before I left for New York and I was leaving my entire life behind in California. I can completely relate to it. I love the narration. I did not like it at first. It was kind of boring. But Morgan Matson, she just grows on you. and. It just develops and delves into these issues, and you think it's going to be a little light contemporary at first, but it turns into so much more. That's why I love it so much, and I want to read more Morgan Matson books. The next book I read this month was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, and I gave it three and a half out of five stars. It's one of those books where I go into it knowing nothing, because you won't even begin to try to explain it. If I try, I will butcher it, and you'll be like, Sophia, I'm never going to read that because of you, so I'm not going to tell you. But I will say the backstory. So I got this at LA Fob um, this year in 2014 in April. After I got it, I immediately read like the first 70 pages. And it was a whole wrong place, wrong time thing. I just wasn't in the mood to read it. So that ended up with me DNFing it. But not because it was bad, just because it wasn't the right time. So I picked it up again. It's the last book I read in California. And I zipped through it in like two days. And I really liked it. The writing was probably the most beautiful writing I have ever read, but the story was so complicated for my little brain that couldn't understand it. It just brings yourself up for amazingness in every aspect possible, and I cannot wait to read the next books. I've heard the series gets better and better, and maybe by the, by, maybe by the last book I will have gotten used to this writing style and give it maybe like a 5 out of 5 out of 5 stars because I'm so blown away by it. But for now, the story itself was confusing. And the next book I read was Intensity by C.C. Cohen. I believe that's how you pronounce the last name. And I'm putting up an entire discussion. I don't know whether a video or plot post, but this is originally a blog tour book. Well, actually it still is a blog tour book, but how do I describe it? It is basically about a girl who is in a lot of debt and to get rid of some of that debt, she goes to work as an escort. I know what you're thinking. Scandalous, Sophia, what the hell are you reading? This does not sound like your normal reading taste. And I'm going to explain all this in the video. I wanted to try something new, but I rated it 2 out of 5 stars. Surprisingly, not because of the subject matter. I can handle escorts. I'm a big girl, I can do that. But it was just so confusing. The writing quality was terrible. The sex scenes weren't even that good. I'm sorry. But I'm going to explain all this later, and it was 2 out of 5 stars. I was so disappointed in it. Like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting it to be like, oh my god, 5 out of 5 stars? I want to be erotic in I wasn't thinking like that, but I was thinking maybe this would open my eyes up to a genre I haven't really dipped my feet in, and one that's generally taboo and not really respected by other people. My opinions for kind of erotica, sexy time books are the same as they are with Don't Shame Young Adult. Don't shame other people for what they like to read. It doesn't matter if you don't like it, but just don't judge them for it. I personally am not into erotica. Well, this wasn't even an erotica book, but not erotica, really sketchy new, new adult. But it just wasn't for me. My next book I read this month was Double Negative by C. Lee McKenzie. And I have a review and giveaway posted for this on my blog. And I rated it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And I thought it was pretty good. I went into it with a completely different idea of what it was actually about. We have this boy named Hutcherson McQueen. He has a reading disability and a vision disability, and he is set for failure. He has all these bad influences in his life. He's, he meets this woman with Alzheimer's, and she changes her li his life. But when I wanted this novel, I thought it was a book about 
a boy who gets life is changed by a teenage girl and their romance makes him a better person, a better influence, just a completely different idea of what the book was actually about. I went into it thinking one thing, I came out of it thinking of another, and I was so happy because all these that I usually dislike were in this book, but I ended up loving it. The next book I read this month was The Rose Master by Valentina Kana, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Personally, I thought it was the best way I can pitch this, as I did in my, in my written review, which I'll link somewhere, is Jane Eyre meets gothic Beauty and the Beast. And I sincerely like this book. It was creepy, kind of a supernatural feel to it, and the romance was very subtle but still intense when it had to be. It's about this girl, I won't insert the name because obviously I can't do names, who was fired when it goes to, to Rosewood Manor and all these weird things start happening to her. There's this weird beast that's kind of on the loose and there's this curse and it's just a really good book. It was actually an arc I received from NetGalley and all my full thoughts will be in the written review. The last book I read this month was Yes Please by Amy Poehler. I bought Yes Please at the Barnes & Noble Black Friday sale and if you did not know, on Black Friday, Barnes & Noble was having this crazy deal where Yes Please was 40% off and there was a 30% off coupon. So I got basically 70% off of this $29 book. And the best part of it all is... <gasps> I was so psyched and so pumped to learn that it was signed. Anyway, this book I gave a solid three and a half out of five stars. I don't know what I expected. Amy Poehler's obviously a comedian, not a writer, but I expected a little something more, a little something different. It went all over the place, and Amy Poehler warned us of that before um, I even started reading the book. It went all over the place. She said it was like a part memoir part, self-help guide. It was just everything about her, about her life, about acting, and for what it was, it was really good, but I just didn't have the context for it. I've never watched Saturday Night Live, I've never seen Parks and Rec. I really needed to know more about her, and this would be more of a supplementary kind of book to read for a as a person, but because of that, I didn't get to enjoy it the full way I could have, but can I just show you this? Of course Amy would do this. It's it's so cool. And just the entire design of the book is amazing. Like, random pictures interspersed. It just needed more background and more preface for me before reading it. And that was my November. I read 10 books this month, which is almost the last I normally read, but as for the, all the aforementioned reasons, I had an excuse for it. As of today, which is the 6th of December, I only need to read 10 more books to get my Goodreads goal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun time. Keep calm and read on. Bye-bye. <laughs>